massive game day today. What a game we've got coming up for our Duke Blue Devils basketball team taking on the Kansas Jayhawks in the Champions Classic. It is here, Duke and Kansas on the hardwood from Indianapolis, Indiana. We break it all down coming up on today's show of Locked On Blue Devils. Glad you're with us. It's time to get to it. You are Locked On Blue Devils, your daily podcast on the Duke Blue Devils, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another episode of the Lockdown Blue Devils podcast. It's so great to have you here with us on Tuesday, November 15th, 2022. A massive game coming up tonight for Duke basketball, playing in the Champions Classic against Kansas. Can't wait to see how this game unfolds, all the storylines that we'll have coming out of it, and more. And of course, we're going to talk about it all here on Lockdown Blue Devils, your only daily devoted podcast to talk everything going on in the life of Duke Athletics. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to subscribe to our Lockdown Blue Devils podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. Leave us a five-star rating and review. Your support means the absolute world to us. Also, be sure to watch the show each and every day on YouTube. Subscribe there as well. Lockdown Blue Devils, we love interacting with you on the podcast platform and on YouTube as well. Follow us on Twitter at LO underscore Blue Devils and follow me on Twitter at underscore JJ underscore Jackson underscore. On today's show, I'm so thrilled because my good buddy Dustin Shu, a co-host of the Devil's Den podcast, is back here with us to talk about Duke basketball one week now into the season. And Shu, it's the best time of year that we've got Duke basketball back in our lives, my friend. Yeah, you know, it gets dark at 5 o'clock, so you kind of get miserable this time of the year until <laughs> basketball starts playing. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm ready for tonight. Uh, really amped up. Yeah. No, here's the thing. It, it's Tuesday morning when people are watching us and listening to us. We're getting set for the big game here between Duke and Kansas. The lifelong Duke basketball fan that you are, Dustin Shue. Does game day feel any different? Are you a Duke basketball fan that you get a little nervous, you get a little anxious? as we get closer to tip-off for these primetime games. I got to know how you're feeling on a day like this. Oh, 100%, always. <laughs> uh, these games, you know, like the the first two games, like I'm excited to go, but I'm not like nervous about it, I guess. Um, but yeah, the first big tilt, especially the, the Champions Classic, look, I just want to say we've still got the best record in the Champions Classic. We are the champions of the Champions <laughs> Classic, so – uh, let's keep that rolling. The yeah. only uh, the only caveat, we are only one and two versus Kansas. So let's even that up. Yeah, I got to change that. Got to go to two and two against the Jayhawks. So uh, I'm the same way, man. Every, every time it's a game day, I'm counting down the hours until tip off. We got to make it all the way to 930 p.m. Eastern tonight <laughs> to see this one because Kentucky and Michigan State get to go first. It feels like every year, whether Dukes and again, they do a great job of rotating. You, you don't play the same team and consecutive years, but it does feel like whether it's Duke, Kentucky, Duke, Michigan State, or Duke, Kansas, someone's going to have to definitely fact check me on this one. I think Duke always plays the second game in the Champions Classic. Like, I don't recall getting it the way first. Uh, yeah, we are typically the marquee matchup. I mean, that's kind of how the needle moves in college basketball, right? Like, look, no disrespect to Kansas, Kentucky, or Michigan State, but marquee matchup you know get you a nap in if you need it yeah no kidding and be ready for 9 30 for good That's time yep. uh, for the stoop basketball game so uh, here we are we're a week into the new season and, and before we get too heavy into our conversation today about this duke and kansas game i do want to go back and revisit what took place on friday exciting game was played for duke as uh, they took on south carolina upstate and in dominant fashion Duke was able to knock off the Spartans by a score of 84 to 38, a 40 minute basketball game. And the Blue Devils held their opponent to under 40 points. Pretty impressive, Dustin. Yeah. Um, for as long as I can remember, this is the best defense that I can recall seeing uh, right out of the gate in 
20 years, maybe it feels like, you know, Shire's team was really good, but they were more methodical in how they did it. They kind of sat back, played real big, uh, slowed you down. This team just gets at there. This is, this reminds me of like the, the early two thousands teams that just hounded you from everywhere and, and uh, never, never gave up. So it's been encouraging to see, to say the least. And this being the second game of the season, of course, Duke picks up the win. They're 2-0 and on the year as they get set for the Champions Classic. You take a look at the box score, and if you're listening to us on the podcast platform on YouTube right now, we're taking a look at the box score as well. Uh, something that jumps out right away, aside from the fact that, again, Upstate scored less points than there are minutes in a basketball game. The other thing that you can notice, Dustin, 14 players checked into the basketball game for Duke basketball, 14 guys got to get out on the floor. Yeah. And for a, a good stretch too, you know, um, it's one of the differences I think we've seen right off the bat is uh, in years past coach K would, would pull the, you know, the third string in two, three minutes to go. Uh, John did this one in six and a half left. I want to say, so even your guys like Jaden shoot um, that would be, you know, getting a couple minutes here and there, they're, they're kind of worn out after three or four minutes. Yeah. So you got to dig deeper into the bench and, you know, you get uh, uh, Spencer Hubbard and, and Stanley uh, yeah. Borden in the game. So, you, you know, you're really digging in when, when those guys come out. Yeah. The most minutes anybody played Jeremy Roach with 25, Mark Mitchell played 24. And then, and then someone like you mentioned, Jaden shoot plays 13 minutes of basketball for Duke in this one. That's all they needed. Duke was uh, pretty dominant in the victory against upstate and really cool to see some of those guys, uh, that are further down the depth chart, get some run, and get to play for Duke. We also saw the season debut for Derek Lively. It featured uh, only four points for Lively to go along with two rebounds and two fouls, two of two from the floor, and 14 minutes of action. His four points came on back-to-back -back dunks uh, to, to really ignite that Cameron Indoor Stadium crowd. What would you make of Lively's debut? Yeah, I mean, that's – you know, for people that don't know – I don't think you're you're not looking at a Marvin Bagley type guy, right? This guy's not coming in to give you 20 and 10 right off the bat. Scoring is not really what he's known to do. Like he he can score, but you look at his high school stats, it wasn't eye popping numbers, you know, 16 eight. This that's a decent amount, but it's not anything in the Zion range, right? Um, so for for everything that we we know about him, he's gonna run the floor, he's gonna play defense. He's going to set screens and then roll to the basket. Hopefully, Jeremy hit him with a nice one uh, for an easy dunk. That, that that was his very first points. Um, and then later he got the, the little leak out yeah. dunk, which I want to see a lot of this year, a, a lot of those. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I thought he did what he was supposed to be doing out there and in the limited minutes, and I'm hoping that we, uh, we see him kind of take another step forward tonight. And that, that's the big thing, right? We kind of knew that it would be limited minutes from the get-go. Anytime you're coming back from an injury like this, there's no need to really rush it back. And uh, to get out there for extensive minutes, there's a much bigger goal in mind than putting on a good performance against South Carolina Upstate. So uh, we'll see Lively get way more run in the games and weeks to come for this Duke men's basketball program. And I can't wait to see all of it. Like, I, I'm really excited about what Derek Lively is going to do for this basketball program. We'll talk a little bit more about the win over South Carolina Upstate and more conversation about Duke basketball as they get set to take on our good pals at Kansas when we come back after our first time out here today on Locked On Blue Devils. Locked On Blue Devils is brought to you by Simply Safe. If you've thought about securing your home with home security but have been putting it off, you'll want to listen up. Right now, Locked On Blue Devils listeners can order the number one rated Simply Safe home security system for 50% off. This is the biggest offer of the year. You don't want to miss this. In an emergency, 24 7 professional monitoring agents use Fast Protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify that the threat is real so you can get priority police response. 24 7 professionally monitoring service costs less than $1 a day less than half the price of ADT's traditional professionally installed system. Don't miss your chance to save big on the only security system that I recommend. Get 50% off any new Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash locked on college. This is their biggest discount of the year, so don't wait. That's simplysafe.com slash locked on college. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Moving forward here on today's episode 
of Lockdown Blue Devils. I'm JJ Jackson alongside my buddy Dustin Shu, one of the co-hosts for the Devils Den podcast, talking about Duke Hoops as they get set for tonight's game against Kansas in the Champions Classic. Give me another guy that's really impressed you through the first two games, Dustin. Um, there's a myriad of them, but I think Jalen Jalen Blake stands out to me a lot. Big surprise for people. <clears throat> you know, you you see often that freshman to sophomore jump, but I don't know if I've seen one quite like that. Um, for, for that level of guy, like obviously Grayson Allen's freshman to sophomore jump, Luke Kennard's freshman to sophomore jump, phenomenal. Those guys were a little bit in that higher tier player, but Jalen Blake's is just uh, – he's really turned it on. And his defense um, – you know, John said that that's going to be the backbone of this team, and I think he's, you know, the epitome of it. He just brings it to uh, to whoever he's guarding as soon as he checks in, and uh, I've been really impressed. With his offense as well, the shot looks good. Um, he's been taking it to the basket, looking to get fouled, still scoring, so uh, really impressed with Jalen Blakes. A lot of people are, are kind of impressed by that outside shot. Again, you look at the numbers – uh, from the game against Upstate for Blakes. He went one of one from three-point range once again, had another steal and bucket, finished on the game with six points. So uh, 14 points in two total games. I don't know that any of us would have really guessed it'd be seven points per game through the first week of play, but here we are. And, and again, we'll see what kind of production he can have later tonight against Kansas. But anytime you can get a guard out there who's going to bring tons of energy on the defensive end, first and foremost, that will do wonders for a Duke basketball squad. Yeah, you know, I, if you watch this game, Duke was down 7 to nothing right out of the gate. Yeah. First three or four minutes, we didn't score. Um, Roach finally hits a three, calms us down. But when Blakes, Lively, um, Grandison checked in, the defense immediately ratcheted up to 100%, and we just went on a phenomenal run. Uh, I think we only let them score 11 more points in the first half. I mean, holding them to 18 points in the first half was – it was incredible. It was, it was really a breath of fresh air to see a, a bunch of freshmen at that, you know, playing this way. Um, haven't seen that in a while, so I hope they keep it up. Mark Mitchell had 18 points in his season debut for Duke against Jacksonville. He follows that up with a 13.7 rebound performance, also one of one from three. That's now three makes from outside for Mark Mitchell. And then we saw yet another double-double as well from Kyle Filipowski. Those freshman bigs are getting it done a little bit for Duke in addition to the debut that we just saw from Derek Lively the second. Yeah, uh, Flip, you know, there was some rumblings preseason that he was kind of having a, a struggle of kind of fitting in and wh what to do in his role. But um, I think he can – he showed us that he can come out and give us 10 points, 10 rebounds every night. I think that would be great if we can get that 10 and 8, 10 and 7, something like that from him. Uh, on a regular basis. And then uh, Mark Mitchell is just – the guy doesn't stop. I don't know how he sleeps because I just feel like he's just constantly at 100%, you know, whatever he's doing. Um, really loved his, his motor and him uh, getting to the paint and trying to draw fouls. Great free throw shooter. Um, so I want to see a lot more of that as well. For Filipowski, those 11 shot attempts that he had against Upstate were the most on the team. I, I don't know necessarily that people saw him – being the guy that would have the largest volume of shots taken in the first game of action back in the uh, Jacksonville, Mark Mitchell took the most shots, but it was Flip that did it against Upstate. So I, I really just love the idea of having so many different guys contribute. We saw the massive game from Ryan Young in the opener. Ryan Young puts together another double-digit scoring performance against Jacksonville. Like, it's so many guys chipping in here early. And again, Duke is yet to see – the season debut of Derek Whitehead. Yeah, and I want to hit on that point you just said about uh, Flip getting the most shots. Yeah. Um, it's been organic, right? Like he's not been forcing it. So that's why I think any given night, just the way the ball's flowing, because these guys like to pass it around. You know, the ball movement's been beautiful so far. So, you know, one night could be Flips getting 11 shots. The next night, Mark Mitchell has 12 shots. The next night, Roach has 13 shots. You know, it's just – how they share the ball and whoever's open takes a Duke shot. You know, it's not a shot for flip. It's not a shot for Roach. It's a shot for Duke. So um, in the last game I saw him pass up, it was a beautiful play. Mitchell drove the lane, kicks it out to Roach. They kick it around the, uh, around the uh, arc and, and Blake's gets a wide open three. You know, you're passing up good shots for great shots. 
we'll take it every single time, every day of the week and, and twice on Sunday, that's for sure, uh, with the way Duke basketball has been playing here to start the year. Impressive stuff all around. Uh, a couple of guards have, have been great additions for Duke's squad uh, and Jacob Grandison on the exterior. And we'll talk about Tyrese Proctor here in just a moment. But what have you thought about Grandison so far? Uh, I love Jacob. Slim Jake. <laughs> uh, he just does a little bit of everything. He's like yeah. our Lance Thomas as a guard. Um, I saw him doubling down on the baseline and then recovering back out to the three-point line to to keep his man from getting open shots. He digs in, you know, in the paint and tries to get his hand in. And then, obviously, we know he can knock it down whenever he's in that corner spot. Um, and he's just he's just all over the place. He, he's had a lot of assists already, too. Um, he just knows how to play basketball. He knows how to play winning basketball. And I love the kid for it already. Yeah, he had five assists in the Jacksonville yep. game. So a really nice performance from him sharing the basketball, sharing the rock. You see there that Jeremy Roach was able to have eight uh, against Upstate. And uh, it's been a really we, – we've gone so long in this conversation, Dustin, and we haven't even talked about Jeremy Roach, our captain, coming back for his junior year. Uh, eight assists, ten points against Upstate. And we know tonight against Kansas, Roach has got to bring it for Duke. Yeah, he's definitely going to have to be out. That none of these guys have been in a game like this. Uh, obviously, um, Jeremy being in in New Orleans last year and throughout the whole entire NCAA tournament, he was incredible. So, uh, I'm looking for him to be the rock, the kind of steadiest. Um, first couple minutes, hopefully, we get off to a better start than we did in the Upstate game. Um, but yeah, just want Jeremy to just you know calm us down and and be the captain on the floor, be the be the point guard for us. I'm expecting big things from Roach as the year continues, as we've talked about a good bit. So let's take a look at, at Duke again, another player uh, that's struggled so far. Uh, Tyrese Proctor uh, has started both games for the Blue Devils, but through two games, he's averaging just 2.5 points per game. Four rebounds is a nice number. He is sharing the basketball a good bit, but been really inefficient shooting the basketball. What have you made of Proctor's play? Uh, it, it's easy, I think, to overreact to these numbers, Dustin, but nonetheless, it is worth pointing out that he hasn't played up to the way he's capable of. Well, you know, I think sometimes we put some unfair expectations on some of these kids. Um, they've been hyped because of whatever their recruiting ranking is. Um, as most people know, Proctor reclassed and came up. He came a year early. Um, he was planning originally just to kind of get stronger and get get bigger and faster and then come to Duke next year. But we talked him into coming in early. So of course there's going to be an adjustment period. And I think that's what he's finding out is that um, he's going to have to get used to the speed, the physicality, um, his shot. He's going to have to get it off a little bit quicker. Um, he's gotten some good looks just because not hadn't made any. Um, I do like his little in and out dribble for a pull up. I think he will knock that down. That looks fantastic. So um, I think he'll, he'll settle in. Hopefully that's, that's at least my hope. I think, um, I'd like for him to settle in by mid-year at least. Yeah. No, and we'll see what kind of big performance he can – maybe Tyrese Proctor. Like, I would not be surprised at all, Dustin, if uh, a lot of people are on his hype train as they should be. I would not be surprised one bit if after tonight's game, Proctor is the guy that we're talking about, right? That it's just like, hey, joke's on you guys. I was just waiting for a big game like this to start the year. 100% agree. And you know what? That's what makes us even more dangerous is I think – on any given night, there's a couple of guys that we could be talking about the next day, right? Yeah, and all yeah. of this without Dariq Whitehead, too. I mean, yes. really fun and exciting times are ahead for this Duke men's basketball squad. Well, we'll get set to take our final time out here on today's program, and when we come back, we'll have more of Lockdown Blue Devils here for you today on Tuesday, November 15th, 2022. Lockdown Blue Devils today is brought to you by our good friends and partners over at Bet Online. Boy, oh boy, do we love our friends at Bet Online this time of year. They've got all the things that you need to bet on, whether it be college football. Duke's got two games left on the season. This Duke basketball season is off and running, and Bet Online has all the best information, stats, news, and analysis. You can get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from football to basketball to soccer to even esports. We've got it all at Bet Online. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at Bet Online as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet Online, where the game starts. 
Moving forward and closing out today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils, my name is JJ Jackson alongside my buddy Dustin Shu, who is a co-host for the Devils Den podcast. Dustin, as we move forward, give me a little pitch for the Devils Den podcast. What are some of the shows that you guys have had recently? Uh, I mean, recently, as the season started, we've just kind of been doing our normal uh, get back in the routine of recapping and then maybe doing a look ahead to, uh, you know, uh, matchups that are coming up. I think we just did our our recap on the the South Carolina Upstate game and a a little bit of a preview for Kansas. But we're definitely going to going to get together uh, after the game and get something out as soon as we can, because I know people are going to be wanting to hear the uh, the reaction from the. Hopefully the big win. That's yeah. what I'm hoping. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people want reaction from all the wins. And uh, hopefully we've got one coming up a little bit later tonight. Again, Duke and Kansas, the Champions Classic from Indianapolis. You can watch it on ESPN. Tip off scheduled for 9 30 p.m. Eastern. Could be later if we've got a long Kentucky and Michigan State game set to be played before Duke gets going. Michigan State had a fun one against Gonzaga on the aircraft carrier. This past Friday. So uh, we take a look at this game against Kansas tonight. What do you think are the keys to victory for Duke? Uh, Well, I think rebounding what we've been doing. We're a big team. I think we need to have that as a strength to uh, to at least offensive rebound uh, or or defensive rebound to keep teams from from piling up offensive rebounds. I should say that was what kind of was a problem of ours last year that in turnovers, I would say. So um, same kind of thing, though, limit the turnovers get on the get on the glass, you know, control the glass. And um I, I don't see them having a whole lot of scores. You know, um Grady Dick's probably the the not the best shooter in the freshman class. Um and he can shoot it. So I think uh you know maybe put Mark Mitchell who knows him. They played in high school together. Yeah. Put him on him. Um hopefully slow him down and and then uh Jalen Wilson can also step out and shoot the three. So I'm curious to see that matchup, whether it be flip, maybe we even get lively out there. Um, or or have Mitchell on Wilson, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but I think that the keys are defense, rebounding, and uh, limit the turnovers. Yeah, a little bit of a different team for Kansas this year. They've got talented freshman Grady Dick being one of them, as you mentioned. They are the reigning national champions, but they don't return Ochai Baji and Christian Brown and some of those big names that were making big time plays for them a season ago. The defense has just been so impressive from Duke and you want to point to the level of competition that's been out there. But I also think it's fair to say, look, this time, this team is going to be a good defensive team this upcoming basketball season. And here's that first big test, right? With, without Dariq Whitehead involved, of course, I I do think this Duke team is going to be able to show you tonight that, yeah, we can play defense a little bit and we're going to make it really tough on Kansas. Yeah, you know, defense is something that that translates every game, right? Defense is effort. It's paying attention to, to your rotations and what you're doing. Uh, and so I think, you know, in the first two games, they've shown that that they really want to concentrate on that end, uh, and, it, and it's bear the results. Um, so I think we just, you know, you, you play good defense, and you make Kansas take tough shots, and you live with the results. Get the rebound if they miss it. Don't let them get offensive rebounds and, and easy uh, points in the paint. Can't wait to see what this game looks like. I'm, I'm fired up. I'm jacked for it. We mentioned Jeremy Roach is ready for a moment like this. He's played in moments like this. You and I both think Duke's going to be able to get the job done tonight uh, and, and knock off Kansas. And, and let's see who it is that steals the headlines. Is it Tyrese Proctor? Is it one of the other guys? I mean, that's always what I want to know is, is which Duke player is really – going to eat their Wheaties this morning and show up. And, and Ryan play. Young could Ryan Young exactly. could have 16 pirouette spins for layups. You know, who knows, man? Who knows, man? I can't wait. I yeah. can't wait. Dustin, as always, thanks so much for taking the time to join me on the podcast today, man. One thing I wanted to do real quick is yeah, if you do. guys you guys got a, a little bit of time to kill before the game. Uh, if you're listening out there, go, go check out Brendan Mark's uh, article that he just wrote on John Shire. Really great read. Brendan, friend of both of ours. Um, a phenomenal article. I think uh, Duke fans will really enjoy that. I love it. Absolutely promoting great work out there about Duke basketball. We're all in this together, all wanting people to see uh, the great things that make up the Duke basketball world. And I would endorse the Devil's Den podcast and the work that you guys do, Dustin. So uh, as always, man, these conversations are fun. And I promise you, it's not going to be your only one this basketball season. We're just getting started. Oh, yeah, man. 40 more, well, 38, hopefully, to go. (laughs) No kidding. 
That's my buddy Dustin Shu, and he's joining us here on today's episode of Lockdown Blue Devils. Thanks so much, as always, for your support of our program. Best of luck to our Duke men's basketball team tonight as they get set to take on Kansas in the Champions Classic. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to follow and subscribe to Lockdown Blue Devils for free wherever you listen to podcasts. Subscribe to our YouTube page as well. We're on that march to 1,000 subscribers. Can't wait to celebrate that milestone with all of you loyal listeners. Comment below what you think is going to happen in tonight's Duke basketball game. That's going to do it for today's show. As always, go Duke. I'll talk to you tomorrow. My name is JJ Jackson. Thank you and good day.